When you're ready to create your own embroidery designs, the Digitize Toolbox has everything you need. I'm Linda Goodall, and in this video, we'll take a quick look at the available tools and what they do. This mouse design, which is included in your Hatch Library, uses a number of different stitch types and styles, and they were all created using the tools that I'll start showing you here. Start by opening the Digitize Toolbox. These first four groups work like graphics tools that create wireframe shapes to which we apply stitches. The next group of two tools can be used to apply textural effects and motif elements. Below that are additional tools for manipulating stitch objects. In this video, we'll cover how to make objects and apply stitches to them. Let's create a new blank document. Control N. One more thing before we get started. In addition to the digitized toolbox, we'll also be using some tools on the toolbars. Let me select a digitizing tool so you can see them. From left to right, we have the Select tool. Mostly we'll be using the standard one, which is this one, but there's also a Polygon Select. Notice that commonly used tools have a hotkey, and learning the hotkeys can make your life a lot more efficient in any program. Next, we have Reshape. This tool is used for editing object shapes either right after they've been created, or later in the design process, or even on previously created designs. Its hotkey is H. Then we have fills and outlines. And notice as I hover over these, there are tooltips that display more information. If you need more help, you can always press the F1 key. I'll be naming hotkeys as I work so you can get used to using them. The fill and outline tools become available when a digitizing tool is selected. Both will be shown for closed shapes. A closed shape has a contiguous line with no breaks or open ends. We can think of these as geometric shapes like triangles, circles, polygons. An open shape is more what we would think of as a line. It's not connected to itself. So digitizing is about decisions. Whenever you digitize an object, there are two main questions you need to ask to decide which tool to use. First, do I want this to be a fill or an outline? And second, do I want an open or a closed shape? Answering these two questions will help you decide which tool to use. A tip here is that you can't change an open shape to a closed one, nor can you change a closed one to an open one. So I do have my rectangle shape selected, and currently I'm on fill. If I wanted to create an outline, I'll click on outline. So you always want to select your shape and your stitch type. So let's start with a fill. To create a rectangle, I'll click somewhere on the screen for my start point, then I'll drag to the opposite diagonal corner. And I can drag in any direction I want. The tool stays attached to your cursor, so to speak, until you either select a different tool or you press Escape. Now if I wanted to make my rectangles into outlines, I'll select my tool, which is selected already, click on Outline. Notice that my Object Properties Docker has changed so it only shows the outline stitch types. As before, I'll click and drag, and now I have an outline. I'll press Escape. Let's make a circle. It's a little different. If you need some help, you can look down here on the status bar. I'm going to drag out to my desired circumference. I'll click again, and now I can either define an oval or a circle, or if I just press Enter, I'll get a perfect circle. And because outline was chosen, we still have an outline. And it's going to make outlines until I select fill. So let's select fill, and I'll make a couple more circles. Can you see the, the direction I drag my lines when I create my circle? Let's do another one. I'll click the center, and if I drag diagonally this way, and then that way, and hit enter, I can get a sideways kind of oval. Now if you want something more interesting, look at the standard shapes, and now we have a collection of standard shapes. We actually have three libraries to choose from, Borders, Borders 2, and Urban Borders. So if I select one, click OK, now I'm going to click and drag it, and I can make it tall, skinny, fat, wide, and I'm just going to drag out to the shape I want, and there it is. So that's how easy it is to create shapes using that first set of tools. Now there are 
Not very interesting, they're just kind of flat fills and plain outlines. So let's dress them up a bit. Let's apply some different stitch effects. I'll click on this object to select it, and I'll pick Contour. I'll change the spacing. Let's try, let's try eight. And you can experiment around here to see what you like best. I can change the color. I can also apply a motif. I can apply an embossed fill. I can even change this to a fill and apply a ripple fill to that. You can change the spacing on that as well. Let's do some of the line effects. I can put a motif on that. That's, that's a pretty small object and that's a pretty big motif. So let's change that to a different one. We'll pick single motifs, and now we have a dotted one. Kind of looks like a halo, doesn't it? We can do the same thing with these objects. Now, with the tatamis, we also have stitch patterns that we can use. We can set different patterns. So I think you can see that you have a lot of stitch effects that you can apply to closed shapes. So one of the stitches I use a lot is this back stitch. If we zoom in on that, you can see how it kind of looks more like hand embroidery. You can change that to a zigzag, satin. The 3D satin, let's turn off true view, and you can see that it's multiple layers of satin, so it's kind of simulating what you would get with puffy foam without having to use puffy foam. The next pair of tools work best with a pen device, but you can also use them with a mouse like I am. So far we've only made closed shapes. An open shape is a line that's not connected to itself, so it only works with outline stitch types. So when we click on Freehand Open Shape, notice that we only have the outline stitch types available. We don't have any choices up here for choosing either outlines or fills. So with the tool selected, find your start point, hold down the left mouse key, and just drag. This tool is useful for doing shading, or maybe some stippling, or writing your name, and it's probably easier to use a pen tool for that, but you can use a mouse. Once again, we can apply different stitch effects. If I put a motif on that and change it to single motifs. We can get some interesting looking things. So this tool is good for sketchy type work, shading, and signatures. Drawing with the freehand close shape tool feels to me like drawing with a rubber band since it's pre-connected. Once again, since it's a close shape, we can choose fill or outline. Let's choose fill. I find my start place, hold down the left mouse key, and just start dragging. And you can see what area is going to be filled in. Notice that because I backtracked over myself, this part didn't get filled in. I can change this to an outline. And now we have our whole shape with stitches on it. Let's create one more. Change it to a fill. And you can see that you're just dragging around and you can make any kind of shape you want. Just like other filled shapes, you can select it and apply different stitch effects to it. So that gives you a good overview of working with the basic shape tools and the freehand tools, and how to apply different stitch effects to them. In another video, we'll continue with the manual digitizing tools, so I'll see you then.